Before beginning maintenance or cleaning procedures on the centrifuge, it is necessary to first close the inlet feed valve in order to prevent the flow of dirty coolant into the centrifuge. Then the centrifuge power switch, which is located on the operations panel, must be turned off. Next, apply the centrifuge brake. The revolution indicator will gradually come to a halt, indicating that the centrifuge has stopped spinning and the hood can be opened for service. Once the revolution indicator has completely stopped, you will notice excess coolant flowing from the drain pipe and coolant in the sight glass at the top of the centrifuge hood. When disassembling the bowl, it is very important to be sure that all excess coolant is drained. This is accomplished by opening the hood drain valve located on the right side of the centrifuge. After all of the coolant has drained from the pipe, be sure to close the valve. Now, Master Chemical Service Technician Toby Hetman will show us the tools necessary for the job. The tools needed for disassembling and reassembling the centrifuge bowl are, first of all, the large spanner wrench to take off the main locking ring on the bowl. Next, we have the small spanner wrench for taking off the locking ring on the regulator ring. The next thing you also need will be a rubber mallet or a heavy type hammer for loosening the locking rings and putting them back on. And then there is also the use of a 19 millimeter metric wrench and also a 13 millimeter metric wrench. To begin opening the centrifuge hood, remove the three hood bolts. They're located on the right side of the centrifuge, the left, and the final one is at the rear of the hood. Use the 19 millimeter wrench to loosen the bolts. Then, continue to turn them by hand until they come to their stopping point. The bolts are mechanically retained in the hood in order to prevent losing them. After loosening the three hood bolts, raise the hood all of the way back. Be sure that the safety latch catches so that the hood will not fall down. The next step is to engage the locking pins which prevent the centrifuge bowl from spinning. There are zero marks at the top and bottom of the bowl which must be lined up with the locking pin. Then tighten the pin down and you will be able to feel it securing the bowl. Also be sure to tighten the locking pin located on the opposite side. At this point, the bowl should not be capable of rotating. The bowl top locking ring is the first item for removal. With the large spanner wrench and the hammer, loosen the ring with a left hand thread motion. Then proceed to remove the ring by hand. The small locking ring which holds the regulating ring down can now be removed. Use the small spanner wrench and tap gently with the hammer, removing the ring with a left hand thread motion. Then complete the removal of the ring by hand. The regulator ring should then be removed for cleaning. When cleaning, be certain to remove all oil or sludge deposits on the inside surface. The next step is to lift the bowl top off. Here we must make certain that none of the passages on the top or the bottom are plugged. The passages can be cleaned using either air pressure or a pipe cleaner that will not scar the interior of the passageways. There is also an O-ring on the top surface and a larger one along the circumference of the bottom. Periodically, Run your finger around both of these to make sure there is no sludge or gouges on them.
The disc stack should be removed for inspection and cleaning next. As you can see, there are individual discs stacked on top of each other. The only time that these would need to be removed for individual cleaning is if the holes on the bottom of the stack are plugged up. If this is not the case, the entire stack should be allowed to soak in a container of cutting fluid or machine cleaner and then blown off with compressed air. The sludge liner should be removed next. A replacement sludge liner is sent with each centrifuge spare parts kit. This assures that the sludge liner replacement can be accomplished with minimum downtime by simply exchanging the dirty liner with the clean spare. After the centrifuge is restarted, the operator can finish cleaning the dirty liner at his leisure. After removing the sludge liner, it is necessary to use a rag and wipe the bowl clean. It is also very important to wipe the thread area clean in order to prevent galling of the stainless steel threads. To remove the bowl bottom, use the 13 millimeter wrench to loosen the hold down bolt. This bolt has a right hand thread and can be removed by hand after loosening with the wrench. The bowl bottom sits on a vertical tapered shaft and can be removed with the use of this large bolt which pulls the bowl from the tapered shaft. Tighten the bolt first by hand and then use a pair of channel locks to gradually turn the bolt approximately one quarter of a turn in order to break the bowl loose from the shaft. Once this is done, loosen both of the locking pins in order to facilitate removal of the bowl from the frame. Then, further tighten the puller bolt down into the bowl until you can lift the bowl up from the shaft. Inside the bowl bottom, there are four drain ports which allow fluid to drain from the bowl. These ports should be unplugged and then the entire bowl can be washed in the cleaning solution. Finally, an inspection is necessary of the area where the shaft seats against the bowl. Back inside the centrifuge housing, an inspection should be made of the frame drain area to make sure it is not clogged. The surface in here should also be wiped clean. The next item for inspection is the vertical shaft itself. It should be cleaned to make sure that no chips or other materials are there when the bowl is placed back onto the shaft. This spindle cap, which fits on the shaft, is here to prevent coolant from seeping down through the bearings into the gear case. If it is necessary to remove the cap, always make sure that the plastic keyway fits back into the groove on the shaft. The cap should then be fit securely back onto the shaft. These three seals also need to be checked to be sure that they are in good condition and seated properly. Quite often when lifting the hood, there may be a lot of suction which may have caused one of the seals to adhere to the hood. So it is necessary to make sure that the seals are in their proper location. It's also a good idea to check the main hood seal located here and replace it if excessively worn. There is also a hood seal in the top of the hood that must be checked periodically. Grasp the seal and attempt to rotate it. It should not move significantly. After a long period of time, the seal will tend to stretch out and will have a lot of play in it. In order to replace this hood seal, it is necessary to lower the hood and remove these four Allen screws. The hood top should then come off easily. To remove the seal, reach in with your fingers and pull upward on it. It fits snugly around the lip of the housing. To install the new seal, start it at one point and then work your fingers around the circumference until it's securely in place. Then, 
reinstall the centrifuge hood top, making sure to line up the holes for the Allen screws and then tighten them securely. After all of the inspections are completed and the cleaning is done, the centrifuge bowl can be reinstalled. The bowl bottom is the first item for installation. With the polar bolt in place, carefully seat the bowl on the tapered shaft. Then, loosen the polar bolt and the bowl will bottom out on the shaft. Next, rotate the bowl so that the zero mark on the keyway lines up with the locking pin, which you can then tighten down into the bowl. And of course, tighten the other pin also, so that the bowl will not move. The hold-down bolt should then be screwed back into the shaft. It should be hand-tightened with the 13 millimeter wrench. Installation of the clean sludge liner is next. Be sure that the liner is seated firmly on the bowl bottom. The disc stack is the next part to be installed. As we saw earlier, there is a zero on this keyway as well as on the top of the disc stack. Also, at the bottom of the disc stack, there is a locating pin. Place the stack over the shaft and turn slowly until the zeros line up and the stack bottoms out. At this point, the bowl top can now be reinstalled. The bowl top also has a zero stamped on it, as well as a slot in the edge of the rim. The zero mark and the slot will line up with the keyway on the bowl. Place the bowl top over the disc stack and rotate it until it seats itself over the keyway. Again, it is essential that these threads are clean and that there is no sludge or grit inside them. Before reinstalling the locking ring, Make sure that there is a thin layer of either medium weight grease or never seize here on the top surface of the bowl top as well as the thread area. Additionally, be sure to grease the locking ring threads and this surface here inside the ring. Then, carefully rotate the locking ring into place by hand using a left-hand thread motion. Use the spanner wrench to further hand-tighten the ring until the zeros are within one-half inch of each other. At this point, use the hammer to tap the spanner wrench in order to bring the zeros together. Then, remove the spanner wrench from the ring. The final two pieces to be installed back on the bowl are the regulator ring and the small locking ring. The regulator ring can be placed over the bowl top and will only fit one way as shown. Also, it's a good idea to put a thin layer of grease on the threads of this small locking ring. This particular ring does not have a zero mark stamped on it. Proceed by hand tightening the ring onto the threads with a left hand motion. Then use the small spanner wrench to further tighten by hand. Finally, tap the ring with the hammer to snug it up. After the bowl has been completely reassembled, you must remember to loosen the locking pins approximately four to five turns each. This will assure that the pins will not interfere with the rotation of the bowl. Then, it's always a good idea to spin the bowl by hand to verify that the bowl is not restricted from rotating. If the centrifuge hand brake was left on during disassembly and reassembly, the bowl will spin with difficulty. Thus, it is very good practice to check by spinning the bowl. The hood can then be lowered back into place and then the three hood bolts should be tightened using the 19 millimeter wrench. One of the routine maintenance procedures for the centrifuge is the changing of the gear case oil. 
This should be done after the first 250 hours on a new centrifuge, which is the break-in period, and then every 1,000 hours thereafter. There is an hour meter for the centrifuge on the operations panel. To accomplish this maintenance procedure, you simply remove the one inch drain plug and allow one liter of the oil, approximately one quart, to drain out. After all of the old oil has drained, replace the plug by hand Then, tighten with the one inch wrench until the plug is good and snug. After draining the gear oil, the revolution indicator housing should be removed for inspection of the gear case. There are three 13 millimeter bolts which must be removed. The purpose of the inspection is to make sure that there are no metallic fines or unusual wear in the gear case. The next step is to remove the old housing gasket. This may be reused if it is in good condition or replaced with a new gasket from the spare parts kit. An inspection of the gear chambers should be made with every oil change. However, a replacement of the gears and bearings seldom is necessary and may not need to be done until approximately 16,000 hours of operation. After inspection, replace the housing and tighten the three bolts. The lubricating oil for the centrifuge has properties specified by Westphalia. When the gear oil sent with the centrifuge is used up, we highly recommend that you reorder the same oil from Centrico or your local distributor. Remove the fill plug and then fill the gear case here with the oil. There is a minimum and a maximum level mark near the sight glass for proper filling of the gear case. You should fill the gear case to the maximum line, being careful not to exceed that level. After the oil level is correct, reinstall the filler plug and the process is complete. Approximately every 4,000 hours or at least once a year, an inspection of the drive clutch lining should be made. An inspection should also be done immediately if there is excessive motor noise when the centrifuge starts up or as it is coming up to speed. This is accomplished by using the 19 millimeter wrench to remove the four nuts which hold the motor securely to the frame. The motor should then be carefully pulled out from the frame and allowed to sit on the centrifuge plate. It is important to note when inspecting the clutch linings that the lining is not worn down to the rivet. If so, these can be replaced with the clutch linings that are in the spare parts kit. If not, they can be touched up by using emery cloth before replacement. Before replacement, it is very important first to make sure that the clutches are evenly spaced around the clutch driver. The number of clutches normally used for this unit is three. It is also very important that the clutches be placed into the clutch driver properly. When looking at the end of the shaft, the clutches should be placed at the right of the tab which holds it into the clutch driver. In this manner, the clutches are pushed, not pulled. To facilitate the installation of the clutches and the driver into the frame, a rubber band should be used to hold the clutches in place during installation. Before replacing the clutch driver and motor back onto the frame, an inspection of the clutch drum should be made. If excessive scoring or wear has taken place, contact your local Master Chemical District Manager for further recommendations. Next, the motor should be placed back into the frame and fastened securely. When the motor is started up, the rubber band will break and the unit will function properly. Regularly scheduled cleaning and maintenance will assure the maximum performance and extended life of the centrifuge 
on the Zybex 1000 coolant recycling system. If you need any further information, please contact your local Master Chemical District Manager.